I thought this would be a good time to record a video because I have got my baby and he's sleeping about babies. And what I've learned so far as a new mom, I'll start with breastfeeding. While you're breastfeeding and you're pumping, squeeze your mm a little bit to make it flow better like as you're pumping and it'll gush into the thing. 10 out of 10 would recommend be careful not to snatch yourself. Tip number two, in order not to snatch yourself on your pump, if you have a manual pump like mine, then uh, you want to put like something, some type of something sensitive to the baby because if they breastfeed after you pump or for any reason have to put their mouth on you, you want it to be like healthy, good for babies. So I use almond oil personally to lube up my little suction cup before I put it on my nut uh, so that I don't pull and yank and, 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 and hurt my skin uh, when I start pumping. Tip number three, these little thingies are lifesavers. I actually just started using mine today because I realized I had one and I and what and I realized what a common problem it was to drop his pacifier <laughs> uh, on the on the on the ground instead of just having it atta be attached to him, you know, or me. Tip number four: this thing. This is so convenient. Get a baby wrap. Tip number five: when to use the baby wrap, right? What happens when you have a baby is that their needs are simple. You feed them, change them, and bathe them. Tend to them, love them, but feed, change, bathe. This is like the top three. What happens after a month or two when they start to get older and where, where parents start to go crazy is because these things happen in Com start happening in combination with each other in different orders <laughs> so he'll eat some get fussy and burp and then i'll change him in between he'll eat some more get fussy do some padding then he'll eat some more then he'll fuss because he's trying to stay awake tip number five is that swaddling after you've done everything that you could do and your baby's still fussing, mama, don't stress. Swaddle. Don't stress. Swaddle. Don't stress. I want to. I want to call this an S word, but use this. Use them. Use 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 the um the sack, the little thing to make the little baby cradling thing. Cause they want to be close to you, but you need your hands free, don't you? So yeah, after you've tried everything, you could swaddle or put them in here and they will fall fast asleep if you have a fussy baby who's trying not to go to sleep or trying really hard to stay awake after feeding, even though they usually go to sleep after feeding. Tip number six. Make sure that you don't go too hard too fast with buying all the baby stuff this is something that everyone told me and i feel really good about everything that we have so far it's not too much but i feel enough padding of preparation to where like we have enough room to where we don't have to run out to the store the same day if we need the next level up of pampers or the next uh level up of an activity thing you know for his age group we have like a good um, foundation for that. So I would say go ahead and think about it in terms of the way that they label things. So like you got, if you got the zero to three month uh, onesies and stuff like that, take your budget for the, for that, for the new, take your newborn budget and then start setting that aside for then the three to six. And then start setting aside at the three to six for the six to 12. We had a lot of help. Tip number seven, do the registry thing. Tell as many people as you can that you're having a baby because you never know. And then tell your people to tell their people that they're 
sister, mother, cousin, brother is having a baby, friend is having a baby. So that those people who care about that person, you like, you know, you want love. If it's if it's love, you want it coming from all directions when the baby is born, especially if you don't have um, a ton of support yourself and you didn't grow up without yourself. You want to make sure that you're participating actively in the creation of your baby's village. Um, one time I had went to the hospital uh, and I was in the emergency room and there was this little boy and his injury wasn't visible, but it appeared as though he had hit his head and might have been concussed. So his family took him to the emergency, of course. And but when I say his family, I mean, like not just his mom and dad, it was at, at some point it was the auntie and the cousins and like a baby and like a couple of other people, like an uncle or something like surrounding this young boy with this like possibly concussed head so not only what was everybody apparently within the vicinity to be able to come to this emergency but also what a lucky little dude right like not i can't tell you what to do like i want that for my son you want that for your baby you want that for your baby because you want that for you when you are not enough and you're always enough for for your babe for for you and your baby's bond but as they grow they're gonna need recipes Pe different people and personalities and sayings and phrases and things to pick and choose from in order to navigate in the world and if it's all just you however your perspective is limited is going to be shared with your child and they're going to have a limited perspective as well until they start broadening their own horizons possibly quite possibly in directions that you are unaware of or may not agree with um tip number seven was the village and tip number eight is to have a sunny disposition keep a sunny disposition all the time it's gonna train you i'm train. i'm trying to train my brain because it's easy to love something when it's small understand that your child is gonna be 18 one day inshallah they will be 30 you know like you're loving you're loving something that started off like this small into a fully grown adult this is the long haul have a sunny disposition Everything that I say to my son now, I hope that I'll be saying some rendition of that when he's five and some rendition of that when he's 15 and some rendition of that when he's a fully grown man. Because as a mother, you are a person, you're you and a, and a person and you were a maiden before you were a mother. But how I've come to think of it and come to see it is like as a mother, you're an experience mother is this feeling of closeness mother is the little things you do in order to make them feel comfortable while you're breastfeeding in order to put them to bed mother is the bath and how enjoyable you're able to make that mother is how fast you respond or how much you neglect mother is a collection of sensory experiences for the baby and so it's important that your sunny disposition and, and keeping an upbeat attitude m maintains a certain level of consistency throughout the baby's life. Um, and like I said, that could be, lit you know, to the rest of, till your life ends, you know? So whatever feelings you had at the beginning about your pregnancy, the positive, unconditional ones, keep it going. I highly recommend making mommy affirmations for yourself, reminding yourself all the time because the more you train yourself not to be just so infatuated with having a baby, but to really understand that this is a being that you are responsible for providing the unconditional womb, like the forever womb they will always be able to come back to you they will always be able to come back to this safe feeling of mother you know 
you have to train yourself. I don't know if it comes naturally to some people or if it's just supposed to be something that like good people do. Good people don't have to do. But I'm definitely anticipating those those moments of irritation because I get frustrated even now. Um, he fights me. Like, um, if you have had your baby already, then you know that your letdown can be too fast or the bottle can be too... Uh, nipple can be too open and it'll have too much flow for the baby and they'll start choking or coughing then you gotta set them up and, and pat them and um it's easy to get frustrated when everything's not linear like it's not just like a straight wham bam thank you ma'am feeding it's easy to get frustrated when you you just changed the diaper but, but you have to do it again <laughs> in like two seconds after that like it's it can be tedious especially when you're balancing like school work everything like that make the affirmations and say them on a daily basis because your child will enjoy them because they'll see them as expressions of love you'll love that you'll love them and you'll also know that you're reassuring yourself too for when times get difficult, frustrating, anything like that, like, nah, bruh, like, it's all Gucci. I'm in it for the long haul. It's mine, like, my, my everything, you know? So those are my eight tips so far as a new mom. Um, within tip eight, with patience, mommy affirmations. Diaper. Tip nine. Let's extend it. Tip nine, definitely have the second diaper, the fresh diaper under the baby before you take the, the, the dirty diaper away. Me, I'm not so good. I just have it all expanded and I like swap out. But some people just put the fresh one completely underneath the dirty one that they have folded underneath the baby to wipe them. This is why you do it this way. And I worked at a daycare and I, that's how I learned how to do it from them. So maybe not everybody knows how to do it like that. But this is how you prevent messes from happening from your baby from peeing on their stuff and pooping all, their, all over the place when you're in the middle of changing them, especially with boys. If they have to spray you, you just like pull, pull the fresh pamper underneath everything upwards and then like catch all of that. Or for the poop, you want to have that dirty diaper underneath over the fresh one to catch any residual nastiness uh, that may come. And then, uh, so yeah, layer your diapers. Always have the fresh one ready under the dirty one so that you can swap out and catch any um, bodily fluids from the baby. <sighs> when storing your, tip number 10, when storing your bottles uh, in your fridge, or anywhere in your house or anywhere really tip number 10 is to just keep your baby stuff separate that's like um probably common sense but maybe not to everybody keep your baby stuff separate and just because you keep your baby stuff separate from your stuff doesn't mean that you cannot not think about baby so like keep the stuff separate is tip 10 and tip 11 is still be super duper conscious and aware of everything that you're using too so like i don't put perfume like i have a roll on i don't spray first of all and i roll it in places that i know that my baby shouldn't be so like this is actually no i know he's his face is not here but his head goes here so i probably shouldn't put it here but i usually put it like on my back or on the back of my legs or like uh in the plate in that warm spot like when you're sitting and then your skin rubs together right there and i use non-scented stuff so like i use user and dry skin some aloe vera gel um some africa's best is like scented but i only use a little bit of it like a like a mineral oil uh, I don't use any Victoria's Secret and Bath and Body Works and lotions and sprays and perfumes and stuff. You want to switch that stuff over. That's my, my that's my 11th tip and I'll cut the video 
here my 11th tip is definitely just go to switch to non-scented if you're a scent freak if you just love the florals you love the the, the fresh the or the or the or the sensual you know try to go non as non-scented as possible most of the non-scented products are better for your skin and it's definitely your baby will thank you because they're super sensitive to stuff